All right, good evening. Uh, 6.41 on the 24th of March. Recall the ZBA meeting to order with the minimum quorum of two full members and two alternate members. So we're gonna, for the, anyway, that's here for the public hearing that was scheduled and posted publicly at 7 p.m. So at seven, we'll start the public hearing uh, in regards to the 477 Greenfield Road. Um, we have minutes to be approved from 7, 8, and 10, 14. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I will second. Um, I did make some changes, so um, maybe a friendly amendment to add the change that Bob Decker wasn't there for one of the motions. I make a motion to modify the minutes to reflect that Robert Decker was not in attendance. Okay, I'll second that. Or do you want a minute to vote now? No, I'm all set. You're all set. Yeah, okay. I saw those. Yeah. Thanks. Right, all those in favor of accepting those minutes? Aye. Jennifer Remillard. Right, Barry Sadowski, yes. Aye. Alex Sershenritter. Okay. Aye. Unanimous. All right. So the next thing um, was historically the ZBA has only met um, when there was an application to review. So I was thinking that we might want to just do quarterly meetings, even if there is no business to attend to. I don't know what membership feels about that. I Maybe we should wait for some more input from the other full members. I have some suggestions on that. I agree with that. I think, you know, we could discuss some of the um, changes on the documents Alex and I have been working on, but we haven't been able to meet recently. Um, but I think it would be good to discuss other things as to um, certain things like last year when bylaws were amended or changed, we could see how those affect us and other thoughts. I agree. I think it's a good idea. We do a quarterly meeting, even if there's no business. I think we should, yes. Okay. Alex? Yeah, that sounds right. great. I'll keep that in, in mind and I'll hopefully if uh, some more full members come on, we can ask them. That's kind of where I'm at on that too. Um, we have been asked by the planning board chair to participate in an accessory bylaw committee um, and have a representative on that. Um, they're not going to meet until after town meeting. So it's not going to be for this town meeting that's rapidly approaching. Planning board has enlisted a consultant and they have a draft that was emailed to me that would allow. I mean, I, I don't know is it, or it, I guess it must be a working document. It's always a working document on a bylaw change. It's, it's posted uh, on a warrant to be voted on, but it does change. It allows um, in some areas of town the, uh, an accessory apartment by right, and then in other areas of town, it requires a special permit depending and also depending on the size, if I remember correctly, um, of it, and there's different conditions, but <clears throat> our accessory apartment bylaw had a sunset clause, so I believe it is, has set. Um, Is there an end date on it? I thought there was some type of sunset clause on that. There's also language on it, you know. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but but anyways, it's a it's a topic of conversation between the planning board and other boards, I guess, have representatives. So um, maybe it would be good to have someone on that committee so i don't know uh, i'm 
pretty much like either a one family house or a two family house. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, well, there's a whole lot more um, pertaining to that. And I'm going to be on that committee as well with other men, you know, members of the planning board and other committees. And I think it's important to have a representative from the ZBA, if I may say so. Yeah, no, I, I think so too. I just, without John and David and Bob here, I don't know if I want to jump into, you know, who wants to be on that. Uh, here's Dave now, but no, I think it's important. Um, you know, they can be. Well, I guess we can decide later <laughs> who's going to be a representative. Is there? Um, I just have a question. Um, so this is the committee is for drafting a new bylaw or we'll listen to um, special permits How you doing? related to the accessory apartment. No, it's drafting a bylaw. Okay. I think it's good for representation to be on there. I mean, if people are reaching out to want to work jointly as a, you know, a team to drafting it and getting everybody's opinions, I think that's a positive. Um, I, I mean, know so there's a lot more into um, accessory dwellings than, you know, having a one family, two family house, especially with, if you look at the real estate market now, it's crazy. I don't know how um, seniors are going to afford moving into places on their own. And I think accessory dwellings may potentially open it up where family members can, you know, house a, an elder attached to you know, like in-law apartments or things like that. I don't know if there's particular clauses and things like go into creating that bylaw. Yeah, I mean, so, the draft that they sent me was pretty in-depth um, as far as different areas of town, square footage, existing construction, uh, home has, home has to be, you know, occupying restrictions. And, uh, you know, I think there's always a challenge, you know, what happens after the property changes hands and how that affects property values for both the person that has it and they don't have it. But there was, there was quite a bit of word verbiage there. So I, like I said, I don't know at what phase or how fast they're trying to push this through, but I was told the next meeting's not going to be until after annual town meeting. So Jen, feel free to enlighten us a little more. I do think it's going to take some time to develop because there's, you know, there's a lot of little things that you have to consider. Like you just said, is it going to be owner occupied, non-owner occupied? Is it attached? Is it detached? You know, what happens down the line? Who's the one that's going to enforce it? Bob. You know, <laughs> you know, and how how is that going to um, affect his time with all of his other in inspections? What are the costs going to you know uh, accrue for the town? Uh, you know, there's multiple multiple levels. We're gonna. I mean, I think the planning board is starting at looking at other communities that already have accessory um, apartment bylaws, and there, you know, there, there's multiple steps. So. I think having people from different committees weighing in and developing it that works best for Deerfield is going to be important. Hey, we haven't started the public hearing yet. That's scheduled for seven. We did start the meeting just a few minutes ago and uh, we approved the old minutes and uh, we're just getting down to the, well, we talked about having a quarterly meeting, even if there's no hearings. Um, I don't know if you're all right with that. And then um, now we're just talking about um, the accessory apartment bylaw committee representative from this committee, if someone wants to be on that. So, a lot of competition for it? Well, there's no competition yet. I no. want to make sure that, you know, okay. even if John's not here, all the full members, if a full member wants to be on it, if, if, if not, then I'm fine with an alternate being on it, but we'll see who wants to do it first. So. Personally, I have enough meetings. 
Adam, maybe you want to also discuss like the way you want to do your future meetings unless COVID has rears its yes, ugly yes, again. Yes, now that we're COVID free again, um, I'd be happy to do them all in person. Uh, so, with accessibility online, uh, it depends on the town too. Like today, it's been a challenge. There's a lot going on today. So, this even though we were scheduled pretty far in advance, they had Zoom operators. I, I would prefer to be all in person. Um, again, but that's up to the chair. I and mean, you know, it's it's definitely you can do all in person, but it has been a challenge. We have two Zoom accounts, and when one of my most important helpers is on the ZBA, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it would be up to the chair what way they want to do it, but and it also depends on what the state decides because it has been extended that they're continuing the hybrid model. But if they decide that they don't want to do that anymore, then it may go all back to in person. I highly doubt it, honestly. I think it's going to stick with the hybrid because there's so many more participants, but that's my opinion, you know. I won't put a suggestion. There might also deter be uh, like what's on the agenda too. Um, you know, if it's just us meeting for uh, quarterly meeting, then we don't have to tie up a Zoom account because you can only what, run two meetings at a time, right? That's that's correct. And we, I mean, we've been also using. There's been other people that have been gracious enough to give us their Zoom accounts, and so you know there are meetings that are happening tonight that are not on a town paid account, but they are town meetings. And they just send me the recording and I post the recording within 24 hours. So um, it just makes for, you know, challenging. I had a town building TBAC meeting that started tonight at five and, um, you know, I knew that people usually jump on early. And so I said to 615 because we had another meeting start. It just, it's complicated. We could spend more money and get more Zoom accounts, but then you have to, you know, make the chairs run the meetings is what I'm thinking we're, we're heading towards. I mean, my, my preference is in person. Uh, but I do see like if you travel, you know, of course the applicant wants to be because it's more convenient. Like I understand that, especially with the Yeah, you need some know. flexibility because there are gonna be some things that are well, I mean, yeah, I mean, especially if you're dealing with like lawyers or representatives or engineers right. and they're on the other right. side of the state, it might be more convenient for them and you have a retirement footprint and gas and everything to yeah. be able to log in I, and I, drive I, all the way out here. Mr. Chair, I also think accessibility for people who aren't able to travel here, whether it's the gas or their just ability to be um, mobile, you yeah. know. And this has given a lot more accessibility to people who may not have been able to participate in the past. We'll leave it up to you. Yeah, I mean, I think we can do it both ways if that's what people want. I, I want to be here. But sometimes you can't. So yeah, but you mean, make it. You'll make a choice in which way you want to do it, whatever, whatever reason. Yeah. Five minutes. You want to take a break? Yeah. All right. We'll take a five minute recess for until uh, seven o'clock. No. What's that? Do I know the password for your food? Yes. No. I'm sorry. I don't. Uh, this guy might. Deerfield. It's Deerfield with a D, capital D. I did. I just told him. There you go. Okay. Uh, good evening. The meeting was called to order at 641 and was posted for 630. The uh, public hearing is posted for 7. So uh, we'll get into the public hearing and then we can go over with the members that just joined us, what we covered prior to their arrival. That's all right with everybody. Yes, yeah. Gentlemen, everything's good. Okay. 
So we have a public hearing for a special permit application filed by Mary C. Clayton Jones for a special permit uh, for property located at 477 Greenfield Road, map 79, lot three, to allow for a center of education and research that supports enhancing balance of the use of agricultural means in the RA district as provided in bylaw, the zoning bylaw C.179, uh, section 2230. Unless the membership has anything, I'll ask the applicant to fill us in on what they're looking to do and what, what their proposal is. And I have an extra copy if anybody uh, wants to review what was previously emailed out and then we'll take comments from the public if there's any all right so we have a full board tonight we have uh everybody uh all so all the members are here yes okay so the participants will be the full board right so the participants will be the full board Okay, whoever from the applicant is here would like to start. You can come, come right on up, sure. So my name is Mary Clayton Jones and my friends call me Kate. And um, I've been driving by that piece of property for a long time. But most importantly, I have a dream um, that that place could be a really amazing place to help elders and people who are a little bit lost refine themselves. So I put in, uh, I did a PowerPoint um, to the initial committee, and it basically is a concept called balance. Like we are post pandemic. A lot of people have felt sort of uprooted and upheaved, but more importantly, a lot of seniors have kind of been shut away and they don't know where they fit into time, space or whatever. So I run a company that um, takes care of people's feet. I know that that sounds a little strange, but feet are really kind of like people's roots. And so as I drove by, this beautiful piece of property that is definitely a garden center. I've lived in this area for 20 years. I remember what it used to look like as a garden center. I kept thinking, you know what? What if I could create a place where people could come to and they could sort of refine um, or rediscover their roots? So from a nursing perspective, because I'm a root, I'm a nurse, um, a lot of people just don't know where their roots are. And I know that that sounds really strange, but um, we have these sort of energetic fields within us that are connected to nature. So, for example, um, lavender, which we happen to grow in the valley, when it's infused into vinegar, is a beautiful way of connecting somebody back into their third eye chakra. Well, what the heck is a third eye chakra, okay? Third eye chakra is sort of like your, um, your realization of spirituality. So as you come down, it turns out that things like um, blood root and, um, uh, and I know that I put this all in my PowerPoint, but there are different plants that are native to this world, to, to this area, that in a sense, when you are around them, so sort of um, essential oils or essential essences or the plants help you literally through your senses reconnect into yourself. So my concept is basically this, is, is that I would like to use that piece of property to create a beautiful garden where people can come and literally walk through it with an educational component to it, like this, these plants right here are really good for this or for this. So there's an educational component to it. There's also a research component to it. So while there's a lot written about it in sort of the lay language, I'm a scientist, I'm a PhD student from UMass. And so we need it sort of written back into the, the world of um, like, how do you reconnect, but in the sort of evidence. So we want to use it as a place to basically help people connect back in. 
write the literature so that it's evidence-based, not just lay literature, sell products that literally help people. So like the lavender infused vinegar, we would like to make that product. And so I think Kirsten is on. Um, she is my landscape designer. So when I walk through there, it's like, how do we create a place called balance that literally from the root up, which for humans is their feet, for plants, it's their roots. We can literally create this place where you can come back and reestablish or gain knowledge or understand that there is something to this in this beautiful area that I live in, that I call home, that not only is about sort of a destination and a learning environment, but also a place where um, people can reconnect to who they are. It's a concept, it's a dream, and I really like your support with it. So Lily, um, who is a friend of mine, uh, she actually, I think, wrote you guys an email and letter of support. And um, she really just, when she wrote it for me and she called me up, she said, Kate, I really want to write a letter of support for you because she reminded me of who I was when I was a beginning nurse and how passionate I was about like caring for individuals. So individuals being people, elders, who just need sort of like love, connection and touch a lot of people are, are touch deprived right now but they they just need somebody to sit at their feet and just to kind of help them regain who they are because a lot of people are lost right now so what type of changes are you expecting to make on the property as far as structures buildings anything permanent um changes the footprint layout parking so i let kirsten speak to that a little bit more because um apparently there was a flood in that area and so she has some ideas about what we can do um i like it as it is it just needs to be turned into a, we would like to turn into a, it into a garden space um the the building that is the one that most people see from the road mm -hmm. um kirsten has suggested that we lift it just to get it out of the floodplain. but basically it would just be a straight lift um the the shop that is over to the right we would keep the same footprint for it i mean it certainly needs some work on the inside um, and then we were thinking um, about putting some greenhouses in, in the back to basically make it a four season um, space. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really, I think, a change to it. I think it's a, a, a bringing it back to what it somewhat used to be, because it used to be a functional mm -hmm. um, garden space. Um, certainly it has been well kept, but it is a, um, it's not a functional business right now. And so the idea is to keep the essence of the area. Um, I love the fact that there's a cafe across the street and Richardson's Candy is down the road and there's a, there's a um, sugar house right there. So if you were driving by um, some landscaping to bake it a garden center, but that's it. Okay. Certainly you, keeping in- The drawing one for this. Here, there's a conceptual drawing. Yep. I don't know if everybody saw that and wants to see it. We're not planning on Sounds doing anything except enhancing what is there already. Go ahead, Kirsten. Well, I would just say, so the footprints of the existing buildings will remain the same. <clears throat> the foundation would simply be raised on that main building is what we are proposing, and then the greenhouses. And also the fact that it sits in the floodplain is basically not to take or remove anything, but to change it um, so that in a sense there were holding areas for water. Um, and I think that you had suggested uh, doing some banking and some digging so that basically it was actually more efficient and more effective at present preventing flooding. Have you had the opportunity? The conservation committee today or so today is a zba meeting mm -hmm. i think that chris kirsten had a conversation with the conservation committee um the you know the step one and then step two and then step three we certainly plan i certainly plan to stay within your regulations and 
um, not only your regulations of what's happening today, but sort of your forward thinking, because I think that it's important. I want to stay around for a long time. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. So this is my home. And it plan I plan to have this as my home for a long time. So I can say as far as the discussion with the Conservation Commission, um, I did speak with Tim Hilchey, um, and just mainly giving some very basic points about the project. Um, again, about the footprints of the building. Um, he wanted to emphasize, which I had already mentioned to Kate, we will need a wetland delineation, you know, before this moves forward into site plan review and going to the Conservation Commission. Um, but he did, he did also say this was mainly just basic information for him so that he could um, give some feedback to you. So that's as far as it went with the Conservation Commission. Okay. And I guess the one thing I can say about earth moving is that the majority of that would be happening closer to, uh, well, be, you know, from the shed to the road. Um, and in, in part that is to do some mounding so that some of these areas that Kate would like to be you know, a combination of native and medicinal herbal walking gardens um, can have some protection from the road, road noise and road traffic, but any mounding that we did, which would also include um, sloping up to a raised building footprint, um, would be mitigated by expanding flood storage elsewhere. So as far as, far as flood storage goes, it would be, um, it would be zeroed out, there would be uh, a balance of cut and fill. Okay, Ms. Morris, to take public comment or have any questions before we take public comment? Uh, John Staberski here. Go ahead, John. Hello. Uh, we have on our, as part of our zoning bylaws, uh, some criteria that we ask an applicant to uh, to address. Have, have you given any uh, thought, or have you looked at the criteria and have uh, have any explanation, or be able to address our criteria and to, and and give us some information about it? Can you be a little bit more specific, please? Yeah, let me, uh, I'm trying to pull up uh, our bylaw just a second, but our, our basic charge is that we have to show, uh, we have, our decision is based upon um, whether the benefits are worth the detriment. And um, maybe I'll pass to someone else and I will see if I can locate the bylaw and quote it uh, to you. But there are, uh, you, we look at the effect on the neighborhood, um, you know, there's a number of different different criteria that that we analyze. But let me, I'd rather rather than uh, just run them off. Let me see if I can find them. Just a second. Mr. Chair, yeah. Um, in the email that we received as part of this packet, uh, several of those questions are already answered. Yes, I, I. Yeah. But if someone wants more explanation, I'm fine with John asking the applicant if they want to go through those. Yeah, I was just going to say that the applicant did, um, we we addressed that in the pre-submittal meeting and she did answer those questions um, in her packet and definitely we can um, review them. Do you, do you have what you said to us? I don't think I got that. So I'm, that's why I'm at, that's why I asked on it. So I'm sorry. It's okay. Does anybody have it that we could read? From um, I can read it if you want me to. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's there. up to the chair. Sorry. You know, it's uh, if the applicant answer. wants to. If you want to paraphrase, I'm fine with that. Going ahead. Go, go um, ahead. Okay, I'll paraphrase. Uh, talked about the raising two and a half to three feet of the building, which she already had mentioned. Um, talked about accessibility. Um, a 12 foot drivable path doubles as a truck access back to the retail shed. So it, I would assume that would answer the question about uh, tractor trailers or other deliveries. Um, talks about tw two 25 by 50 foot greenhouses 
are shown freestanding and a one 15 foot by 40 foot greenhouse attached to the west side of the building. Um, we'll do a heated greenhouse. Talked about potentially being handicapped, um, not being fully handicap accessible in that one spot, um, but looking at how to approach that. For parking, there are 14 parking spaces immediately in front of the main building at 10 foot wide, plus an additional 10 spaces to the north, um, assumed on grass for now or always, if or not, if we prefer gravel as the ZBA. Um, they're also talking about potentially creating a recipe for stabilized turf. So that shows the permeated um, ground, so or pervious ground. So um, they'll have two handicap accessible spaces um, in the front of the store. Only one is required for up to 25 total spaces. So they have gone above that. Um, there's a hundred foot of buffer of the wetlands um, west of the parking zone. They talked about mounding during the presentation, but they're talking about that in here under the sign um, in combination with plantings and a piece of the road would be eliminated from the view of the building, reducing the dominance of the road somewhat. And they're also going to add a rain garden and additional flood storage off the main parking area. Um, flood waters will cross the street before coming into the building, depending on how the flooding goes. So parking was addressed. Uh, traffic increase was not listed, but um, I don't know if we one of the things that we had talked about previously was requiring a traffic study, but I don't think we ever, you know, that wasn't voted on um, as being mandatory or is it already part of the- Well, we have to determine, uh, you know, if this proposal is gonna have a negative impact or, you know, a similar impact to either what was already there because it's pre-existing yeah. or if it's something new, you know, how many cars and how many visitors they're gonna have and, you know, that is one of our criteria is the traffic. It does, know, it doesn't know, sound our, like you know, to really paraphrase our, our overall, you know, idea is the environment as far as the traffic environment, you know, the impact is our charge. The conservation committee gets into the weeds, if you will, on the actual wetlands protection act and that stuff. But I understand by talking to the building inspector you know, you're kind of in a position where if we won't grant the special permit for your use, then it doesn't necessarily make sense for you or anybody else to go forward with the engineering and the other per the other permitting process that the building inspector and the conservation committee has. And I, I know they have some concerns and we have options, you know, as a board, you know, if we were going to approve it or deny it, that would be one thing. If we approve it, we could condition it to say, you know, you, you know, the special permit's only good as if, you know, you square everything away with the conservation committee and they're good with it. In the past, this board's taken flack for wanting to move forward without the conservation committee being done. So we can leave your, we could leave this hearing open after we get done with it until like another, in April, I, you know, I want to be as upfront as we possibly can. I, I think that your application for an existing use building, you know, is, is a good thing. So we can continue, you know, go ahead and continue with the, in, with the hearing. And John, we can get into the finer minutiae of those criteria if you would like at, at, at any point. Yeah, I, I, I do have them up now. Um, so uh, our charge as the ZBA is to determine whether the proposed use outweighs its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. And it goes on to say, in view of the particular characteristics of the site and of the proposal in relation to that site. <clears throat> and so we have six different criteria. And so it's our charge really to evaluate this criteria. And I think it's important for at least the applicant to give us some evidence on some of these. So um, particularly if this is ever challenged, we can say we took in evidence and we made determinations. Um, so I could go through them one by one. Uh, I, maybe I'll give you a general idea. Some of the things you've already talked about, 
but number one is the social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal. You know, I think you've addressed some of those, but if there's anything more on that topic, it would be good to hear it. So one of the things that I am passionate about is um, older people. I love them. And I think that they need a place to, to uh, feel safe coming to visit. I think that the um, concept that we have come up with is about, um, um, in a sense, not overwhelming them, but just giving them a place to come and sit or to be or to reconnect or to bring a daughter or a son or just in a sense to have a quiet space. So I certainly do not envision something that on a Saturday afternoon looks like Yankee Candle. Um, this is much more uh, a one, maybe three people, maybe four people. In, fa in fact, it's a quiet space. So we might have a workshop that has um, 14 people attending, but we're not going to have a workshop that has a thousand people attending. So it's quiet. It's a sanctuary. It's um, the the products that we sell will probably much more likely to sell to somebody who's swinging by to get something. I don't imagine that it would look like Richardson candy on an afternoon. So I certainly um, know how overwhelming things can be. I'm also a business owner. And so I also know how you can do things by appointment only. Um, and that was basically the concept is to give people just a, a quiet space, but also to recognize that this is a business. So. So, so, so to kind of summarize, uh, you're serving the needs of the older population in town and in the probably greater Franklin County area. Absolutely. So, so that's just, I, yeah. yeah, so I actually wrote in the proposal that there's a research component to it. So um, currently, I do a lot of research about elders and balance. And so in a sense, inviting them in to participate in this. I did a study at UMass. It was about gate, about a gate, um, a gate study. And so that's literally, I'm looking for a place to do research, to connect people back into their roots, to keep it quiet, um, but also to give it a presence. And I certainly think that it will bring a, um, a kind of a cool bent to the town of Deerfield. So instead of it being like um, a, a brewery that I love, don't get me wrong, but definitely something that is more focused on elders and people who are quiet and want to come back and connect into this beautiful landscape of ours. Thank you. Mr. Decker, go ahead. I got a couple of questions for the applicant. So I understand that you want to have two treatment rooms um, that are going to be east of the greenhouse. Is that correct? So right now on the back of the building is a shed, a shed, right? And that shed is storage space. And so I was basically going to change that into an area where I could help people connect back into their roots. And the way that I do that is by taking care of people's feet. You're going to take care of their feet? Yes. Right. So that's a treatment room, in my opinion. It's medical. Uh, it's not medical. So, so we if can you can make differ on that, right? So, if you, so if you consider a massage, something medical, right? Then, then I can see where you're coming from. Well, I don't think massages are allowed in that area uh, of the town. I don't think it's zoned for massages. Am I correct or incorrect? I don't think so. <laughs> well, my question, on, what on I'm trying to get at is yeah. the, 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 the two things, the thing that you want to do that's not covered under the agricultural exception yep. is this treatment room. Yep. Right. And that's the only thing that I have heard you talk about other than maybe the workshops, but that could be considered to be education. That's what, so, but the treatment rooms aren't necessarily, um, don't fall into one of the category exemptions that we have. So, so, but, go ahead. Right? Yeah. Now, I think there may be room that the board could grant the permit to allow the treatment rooms in that, that confined space yep. uh, based upon the fact that it's a pre-existing building and it's not, if the board so finds, it's not any more detrimental to the area and the neighborhood, et, et cetera, than the non-conforming use. Okay. But, but I think that the board would only 
could restrict the, the so-called non-agricultural or educational use to that particular area. Okay. And uh, they can make the exception. I think it's under, John, you can look it up. I think it's under section six of the state uh, law that deals with uh, the zoning. And I think the board can make a finding that on that uh, to do that. It's, but that would be the limit of, of the uh, use that wasn't permitted as in the agricultural district. Yeah, that's a challenge that we have that Mr. Decker pointed out okay. is the treatment per se is not agricultural right. education. So, so um, can I can I just back up and say that the that the care that I give to people is the vast majority of it is educational. So even though it is changing somebody's shoelaces or it is positioning somebody's body, like rebalancing somebody. Um, I can, you could write that off as a treatment or you could certainly put that in as I'm educating people about where their feet are in time and space. Um, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Swirsky, yes. Um, <clears throat> so the language that uh, both you and Mr. Decker kind of were quoting seemed to be more of a variance language rather than a special permit. My, my understanding is that this is a special permit application and that we, need to stick to the criteria I've gone through one. Well, the, the point that Mr. Decker raised as his opinion was that medical treatment, and I know we're, we're, we're going into a little bit of a gray area because one's definition of such and another is different, which I understand, but let's say if you wanted to put a doctor's office there, just to be clear, a regular, you know, pediatrician's office, everyday medicine. This special permit, we wouldn't be able to do that there. So, but that, but that is not what we're asked to decide here. We're asked to decide right, but, whether this special permit meets the criteria, and whether somebody has a doctor's office or a chiropractor's can't office is not a special permit there for a doctor's office because it's not zoned commercially. And, and it's, no it's, re it's a residential agricultural. So the use that they're asking for is permitted by special permit in that district. My personal opinion is it should be commercial from the walk all the way to the Waitley Lawn. But in the middle there, where this is, we have a residential agricultural zone and we're trying to facilitate this by a special permit. It, so our criteria, our criteria for a special permit does not does, does not facilitate that analysis. With a finding by the board that the use of these two rooms isn't any more detrimental. Right. And what have it? Uh, whether we could grant it without making these people go back through and file for variance, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is we need to uh, tell these people whether or not we think we could grant it. I think we could grant it if the proper application is made. If John thinks oh. it's not the proper application to, to grant the permit under section six, then then we'll have to- Well, I asked and the building, well, Jen Gannett's got her hand up and the building inspector's on board here too. And I asked for, we had this hearing, if we should entertain both. And the instruction I was given is that the special permit should be able to accommodate this application, accommodate this situation. Mm -hmm. So, um, Will town council tell us that. Well, before I go to town council, I go to our in house people and I asked them if this was in order and if that we could move forward with a special permit and there was not a need for a variance. And I, building inspector, told me that we could move forward with this and that he researched it. So, that's where, where we are here. So uh, before we go any further, Jen Gannett and Bob Waldron can work way in on, on this situation and then I'll go with your comment, Mr. Potter. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, I can weigh in first. I'm just trying, I mean, in the residential agricultural area, an agricultural use not exempt by mass general law is allowed by special permit. So the determination is whether it is actually an agricultural use is what we're trying to determine 
whether you would grant that special permit based on that criteria. Not whether, I mean, that, that's what you have to decide is whether it's medical or truly agricultural. I mean, and, and there is an educational component, which is also allowed by special permit there. So that's why I sent them to the board. So I just want to clarify that I'm a nurse. I don't practice medicine. Mr. Balfour. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm hearing what John is saying, that, that it's, it's not particularly our job right now to, to parse out the innuendo or the nuance of whether it is or isn't medical. It's not presented as medical. It says treatment and it's being portrayed as educational. So I think that if we're, uh, you know, considering the criteria that we have, let's learn more about how the business satisfies or doesn't satisfy those criteria and see if we can't make a decision based on that. Um, and it uh, may, maybe ultimately is it the board, uh, the, I'm, I'm sorry, the, uh, the building inspector or, or another person down the road who might well, have to investigate whether there's medicine being practiced because it doesn't seem like that's our job here. No, I mean, there's, in order for us to grant a special permit, majority of us have to determine that it is in fact agricultural and educational and we can grant the special permit, which I think the only thing that was brought up was <clears throat> because of the, way, of the way a room is labeled, it may indicate something else. And I'm not, you know, that's, that's one of those things where you work in a little bit of a gray area. I mean, like I said before, my personal opinion is it's, it's a fine use. It's a commercial and, you know, across the street, there's a store, there's another store, then there's another store, then there's another gas station. So I, I, in this particular spot would tend to give a little bit more leeway of what an actual business would be there. We're not talking about putting in Dunkin' Donuts with a drive through that's selling, you know, also selling corn stocks, you know, like there's, there's different things. So sure. give anybody any ideas. Oh, Thanks, Mr. Chair. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with holistic things, which I believe is what uh, Ms. Clayton Jones is looking at doing, essential oils are being created from the plants she is growing. She is utilizing them to educate and help relief, uh, I'm assuming, certain things by putting essential oils on your feet, which help to relax, help with your body. If you're unfamiliar with that, aspect. It's not a medical treatment. You don't need a medical license in order to do those things. I think we need to focus on what's in front of us, not project our emotions and the feelings into what you think is going to happen when you have a descriptive packet of information in front of us. We have the six questions and criteria we've utilized at every other meeting, um, and we need to focus on that. Right, yeah, um, I'd like to address the, the first criteria that we're talking about. Um, I'm curious about the- Could you speak into the mic, please? Sure, sorry about that. I'm, uh, what I said is I'm curious about the first criteria and wanted to know more about the, um, the business plan and, and, and the economics of the, of the venture. Um, uh, I, I'm not quite sure I understand how it's a business. And I, I get that there's, there's uh, you know, uh, products for sale. Um, beyond, is there something beyond that that people would be paying for? So the business model is basically to, um, uh, to create a sanctuary where people can come. If you look at the sisters model, um, there's a $10 admission fee for people to come to there to just come and sit and enjoy it. So we looked at, the, I've looked at that. I've also looked at the creation of, sorry, um, creation of products from our, <coughs> thank you, um, from, from the things that we grow. 
So two and a half acres is not enough acreage to supply Amazon with lavender infused vinegar. There are certainly other people around here that we could buy the lavender, the lavender from, um, but we would certainly do our research and development where we are to create these products that are more chakra um, uh, appropriate. I also think about selling education. So bringing people there and doing workshops there about the healing properties of these things. So if you think about, to your point, Jennifer, is, is that a lot of people don't understand that their feet are roots. And so if we literally bring them back in and we say, hey, you know what, I want you to walk, you're gonna pay me, I don't know, $60 to take a class and for the next three hours, I'm going to take you through this healing garden and I'm gonna educate you on the benefits of these plants and whatever else so not only is it to the general public um to say the seniors from um your senior center coming through and doing a workshop but it's more importantly how do i teach the people that um across america will come and attend those workshops because there's value to this there's just not a lot of scientific background a lot of it is in the lay literature and i want to show that this actually has efficacy and is important um, I feel like we throw way too many pills at people and there are other ways in a much more holistic manner to actually help elders sort of maintain their dignity and their balance. And so there's this just big wraparound. So some of our economics are in the papers and the lectures that we go out and do from the stuff that we learn by having a research and educational center in Deerfield. The garden itself, I'm hoping will break even. If you want to come and get your rosemary from me, please do. Oh, that would be a good agricultural sale. <laughs> Mr. Decker, do you have another? I'm not, worried about, I'm not worried about the growing of the lavender or uh, manufacturing the lavender, the process. That's an agricultural use as far as I'm concerned. Where I get the problem comes is when it comes to the treatment room where they're actually uh, treating the human body be it beet or, or what have you. And I just think that um, the application, I don't think it's permitted, it is a permitted use. And I think we have to, in order to allow it, we have to make an exception relative to section six of the statute. And as John pointed out, he thinks it needs to be a variance. I kind of think it needs to be a variance that he has, they have to request. Uh, uh, Mr. Decker, you're putting words in my mouth. I said, I did not say this needs to be a variance. Quite frankly, I don't think it needs to be a variance because I think that the, what you think is the treatment room is de minimis to the entire operation. And, and, and although that might be one room in a two and a half acre plot, it is not the fundamental thrust. So I, I, I would agree with our building inspector that this is not a variance case. This is a special permit. Uh, I think we should confine ourselves and our analysis to the six uh, criteria we have to evaluate a special permit. We've gone through one, there are five others. Those five others should be pretty quick, uh, but I think we should run through those five criteria, other five criteria. And I, I can list them off if we wanna just go through them quickly now, um, rather than kind of go back and forth. The second criteria, and, and again, we're, we're weighing the detrimental impacts versus the advantages is what will this have, what kind of effect will this have on traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading? I know you've addressed a, a little bit of it so far, but I, I, I don't think it'll have a significant effect, but that's you to make your case with it. Um, for example, how many cars do you think you might have a week or a day or an hour coming in and out of there and we have enough parking and loading to facilitate your anticipated traffic. So right now, I think that there's one car a week going out in and out of there, if that's it. But that's not the way that that space used to be used. That used to be a very busy garden center with a lot of traffic coming in and out. To Kirsten's point, we've got, I think, 14 parking spaces in there. 
Um, and we anticipate that, um, you know, one person, maybe a family would be coming in and then leaving. I can't see um, those parking spaces being all filled at one time because that's not the nature of our that's not the nature of our business. There's an additional road cut that was uh, that right now has a bush in front of it um, that we would like to actually open back up and basically that allows a entrance and an exit without going in the same entrance and the exit. Um, and so that basically it is a, um, it's not, I think a huge, it's not, an, not much of an impact onto a very busy road. The only thing I'll add is that as far as parking spaces, there are the 14 and then we had potentially 10 overflow if needed. <clears throat> I'm satisfied with that explanation. Does anybody else have any thoughts or want to comment on it? No, just I'm sure it is, but it's a it was a pre-existing mass DOT approved curb cut. Is there any paperwork with that? I can ask mass DOT for it. I was assured by the Richardsons that it was so. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Can you please come up to the microphone? We can't oh, hear you online. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Sandy Williams from the Sugar House next door. We had a curb cut there at one time, but when we built the Sugar House, Mass DOT made us close that curb cut because they wouldn't allow three curb cuts for one parcel because it was one parcel at one time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you'd have a problem getting another curb cut. Uh, uh, for me, I can't speak for the rest of the board members for what she's explaining for a business panel. I'm fine with the one existing curb cut. Um, we just, I just know that another place in town had a, a curb, alleged curb, had an existing driveway and thought they had a curb cut and then they didn't have a curb cut. So, um, they had to, to deal with that. So that does happen. Um, I think it's it's always best if the if those are submitted. I I can't speak for the rest of the board. Do you have any other anybody else have any questions regarding traffic flow? Uh, we stepped up there for Miss uh, for a minute, Mr. Decker. Well, I don't have any problem with the traffic flow or anything else. I just think that I have my opinion. Mr. Stabersky has a different opinion. The building inspector has an opinion that sides with him. And I think it belongs to the variance, and I don't have a problem voting for the variance. Okay. But but the point is, that's not what's being presented tonight. Right. So we'll, we'll go with the special purpose for now. Mm -hmm. um, so can I can I say one thing because I didn't have a chance before. Yes, Jen. Okay. So basically, the board needs to decide whether or not they want to approve this use for that property, if. You want to give the applicant the if you decide that you're not going to allow the use for that property, you would like to give the applicant the right to um, um, de, um, what do you call it? Withdraw. Remove, withdraw. Thank you. Withdraw the applicant application and then resubmit with a variance because if you decide as a board to deny the use on this property, then she can't come back for a while. So you're, you're, you're gonna make the decision of whether or not this use is correct for this zone and it meets the seven criteria and base your decision upon that. So you're both talking about the same thing. Yes, it need, it's, a, it's an application for a special permit and you need to um, you know apply those conditions. I mean, um, those seven steps, thank you. <laughs> It's been a really long day. Um, I know. And, uh, and, or, you know, and so then at that point, you, you, you give that choice to the applicant. So, you know, yeah, what we, we, we do that. Each time. Okay. All right. Thanks. If, if I think it's not looking good, I make sure we give the applicant the opportunity to withdraw. Mr. Mr. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we need to allow Mr. Stabersky to finish. Yeah. I believe he has the floor and you were going through this. Right. 
Well, we need to let him finish on that. I, I yeah. was getting that, but thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. When, when you're ready, Mr. Chair, I will. Uh, uh, Please continue, John. So the the so we've gone through to the third uh, criteria, and and again, I don't think this is going to be much of a showing, but the adequacy of utilities and other public services. Yes. Again, does the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts? So uh, we it, do have one comment from the Board of Health and a concern about the septic. That was the um, only utility concern that I have back. So my understanding is that currently it has enough set of a septic system for the um, for the building. I do not envision us needing anything more than that for the vast majority of daily operations. If we were to have a special event, we would bring in additional porta potties or something like that. I mean, a, a special event as in if we held a workshop for um, Franklin County seniors, which sounds like a lot of people, but it's not really. I mean, like it would, we would, we would pull a special event permit for that, and that would address that that use or that day's needs. Um, but I don't think that we need anything more than is already there. Board of Health would have to sign it. Board of Health sign it. The Board of Health wrote a uh, one-liner. Concerned about septic capacity. That was it. So, so we're going to have to probably put a. They may have to put in a raised septic system. To I comply because I it's in just, the floodplain. Well, I like I said. I don't I, know. I'm I not mean, an expert, but I. One of these. One of these things outside of my realm of knowledge. Mm -hmm. As far as it. Uh, so I, I talked. I talked to Mr. Kalashevsky about it, and he didn't seem to think that given our intended use that there would be much of a problem because it's basically the septic that is there is um, presumed good. I do not actually own this building right now. So um, it is still pending. So this this ZBA is actually for me to purchase the property. Right. Um, so it is assumed that during inspection, things to do with the septic will uncover themselves if it's not acceptable. Mr. Chair, yes. we could also condition the permit to, if it doesn't pass Board of Health, then they can't use Balance. it because that would be their op use, or occupancy right. permit anyways, right? Yeah, I, 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 Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair I, I would, uh, you know, I think if we do decide to uh, approve this permit, that we should have a condition that it's subject to an approved uh, septic system uh, suitable for the premises. It, it's not a big condition, but it's if there's a concern there, that's part of our evaluation. We can we can condition the permit. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or concerns in regards to utilities? <clears throat> no. Yeah. Ahead, Mr. Mr. Chair, may I? Uh, so the uh, fourth criteria. Uh, is uh, again, do, will the proposed use outweigh the detrimental impacts of the neighborhood character and social structures? So is that something the applicant wants to say anything about or, or people representing the applicant? I, I mean, I've heard, uh, heard some on that. I don't think you need to repeat what you already said about. Right. Um, things, but maybe if you want to expand about the neighborhood conditions, how the building fits in, your use fits in with what's around you, I think maybe you could go ahead a little bit more on that. But as far as you know, your social interactions and things like that, what your goal is for the, the people you wish to serve, I, I've heard of plenty on that. So. so if you drive down five and 10, it's interesting, right? You go farm, farm, coffee shop, gas station, school, I don't see us being any different than what is already there. I certainly think that instead of an empty lot that is nicely mowed, that a garden will enhance the beauty for it. I'm not quite sure I see the detriment of what we're doing beyond the fact that it is now will or will be a business instead of uh, an area that sits not very fully used or not used. So 
if you guys can see a detriment to it, I'm interested because I'd like to not be a detriment. I don't have anything. Anyone else have any questions? I think it'd be a benefit. Oh, yeah, I don't see any detriments whatsoever. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I on the next uh, criteria? Well, go right ahead. So the uh, Fifth of six criteria is, is is the impact on the natural environment. Um, so if you could uh, tell us what you think, uh, is there a negative or positive impact on the natural environment? I'm going to let Kirsten, who is the expert in this, answer that a little bit better. Sure. So one of the main changes that will take place here is that what is currently lawn mowed lawn will become um, you know, permanent plantings, um, a good deal of which will be native. So in a lot of respects, it will be <clears throat> a little bit of a continuation of the wetland, excuse me, <clears throat> wetland plants um, and some upland plants you know, that, are in, um, that are native to the region and, and others as well. But we are, we are within a you know, 100 foot buffer of a wetland. Um, and so we're really only looking to improve that as far as the environmental impact goes, I guess. And then I guess in previously I spoke about um, some mounding. Um, so, and, but, but that, that would be mitigated by um, depressions elsewhere, rain gardens, et cetera, where flood storage um, can go. So um, yeah, and then, you know, the greenhouses that will go in um, mimic greenhouses that have been there in the past. So really the, the main change would be going from lawn to plantings. I have no concern. I think it's a, a benefit as opposed to a detriment to what you're planning, but that's my personal opinion, obviously. I agree. Yeah, Mr. Decker. They're gonna raise the grade of the buildings. I assume they're going to raise the grade around the buildings, right? And there'll be an issue with the Conservation Commission, I would assume about compensatory storage, et cetera, of the water. Well, we've been down this road again, and I was gonna defer to the Conservation Committee. I had yeah, a conversation. I was just trying to say. I had that, a, con well, let me finish for a second. I think if we move forward with granting a permit here, then we have to condition it that they have to be, uh, one, the plan has to be similar to what it presented to us, and it has to comply with the conservation committee. And if it doesn't, if it's if something drastically has to change from what's presented here, then they have to come back to us. That's where I see it on it. And then, however they, however they work things out with the conservation committee, I'm fine. Um, the conservation committee might have, you know, concerns about where the greenhouses are located versus the, the buffer zone, and you know. If they allow them to build, you know, if they want to on concrete, if they want them on pads, if they want them just on dirt, like that's to me, that's I'm not going to get into that. I, I'm not either, but when, I'm, when the main building gets raised in grade two and a half feet, uh, there's going to be a, a degree of fill that's going to be put around it. To there may or there may not be. Because so let me, let me be. just explain why we thought about, and if this is a thought, it is not in cut in stone, is the reason that we considered raising it out of the floodplain was basically because Irene came along and put a beautiful water mark at about the two and a half foot mark. And so in order to protect our asset and to also not make it an insurance hazard, it seemed to make sense to raise the building. You wouldn't necessarily raise the entrance way, you would just raise with concrete. So I have yeah, I get to find ahead, an engine. Go, go ahead, Kirsten. Sure. Yeah, I can say that um, the grade all the way around the building will not be raised. The, the building itself, the foundation will be raised and there will be a ramp going up to two different ramps. Um, one will include some raised grade that is held by a retaining wall so that the, the grade on the other side of that wall can be lower. Um, and then the other ramp could be a wooden ramp it could be concrete, but um, but essentially, in raising that building, will just require steps going up to it or a ramp. <clears throat> but the grade all around the building will not be raised. 
So this is about water management. Mm -hmm. We hope we never see an Irene again. Um, but last year, there was certainly flooding in that area, and that is the reality of global warming. For me, this is a huge investment. It's a passion. It's a dream. And so the idea behind it is, is that this will be an asset to the community for a lot longer than I'll be around, and I plan to be around for a long time. Okay. Uh, Butters, members of the public, any? Okay, he's got one more. He's got one more, oh, number six. One more? I got one more. This one, this one should be an easy one as well. Uh, the potential fiscal impact, in, including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. So, um, you know, uh, it's neutral at best. I mean, I'm sure the same taxes are going to be paid, maybe more. Uh, why don't we talk about the impact on town services, tax base, employment? Anything there? So I plan to bring in employ people to work it. Um, certainly a couple of gardeners and certainly uh, volunteers to also help with it. I think that it's a great place to volunteer. Um, I certainly plan to pay my taxes. Um, I think that that's an important contribution. I don't feel like I'm going to put any additional strain on the resources of the town. Um, I don't, I hope that I never have a fire or something like that. I really respect your fire brigade, but I like to donate to them. I don't like to see them at my back door. Um, I think that um, there is certainly the potential to do something that is fiscally interesting, which is to do education. A fall or an ambulance call, or an ambulance call for a fallen elder is actually a uh, um, financial strain on your resources. If I can prevent a couple of your elders from falling, that would be wonderful. Um, if I can prevent them Excuse from being me, lonely, me. that would be great. So there are Do other economic impacts that I think are beneficial. Yeah. What happened? So I, th I think that there are, there are other economic contributions that this business will be making to you and your community that might not see in a check written to the town, but I certainly think this will be a valuable asset to the town. And also, um, it um, because I am uh, connected to the University of Massachusetts and to the School of Nursing, will certainly have a bigger ripple effect than just a building on 5 and 10. Mr. Chair, oh, yeah. um, I would just like to say that the fact that uh, the building inspector deemed it appropriate for the special permit to come before us, not a variance, it is his professional opinion and that's the professional opinion that the applicant is going by, that the board should be voting for a special permit, not a variance. Just yeah, wanted we, to we share my have, opinion. We, we don't have, even, have a variance application, so. We'll move forward with the special permit. Um, anybody on online? Alex wants to comment. Anybody? Any public? I would. Bob, Bob. I just want to comment on. It wasn't presented to me at all as a medical facility. It was presented as educational and agricultural. So. Okay. That's just my final comment on that. No, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. Hang on, let's get through public comment here. Uh, any, Alex, do you know? Does anybody get their hand raised or anything? I'm There's not. nobody online that has a question. Okay. Anybody in the audience got anything else? Butters? Oh, yeah. Bobby. Okay. Bob, you had something? Um, I think that if we eliminate the, the use as a treatment room and the treatment rooms, object to granting a permit, but I don't think we should allow the treatment rooms. Mr. Chair? Yep. Um, Mr. Decker, I respect your opinion, but at the same time, the applicant could also perform treatments in the middle of the facility and call that a treatment room. So whether you're in a closed door space or an open door space, working with someone with essential oils on their feet does not make it a medical facility. It's an existing structure which does not need um, to be changed. There's no additions being made to the building other than the potential landscaping and the other pieces. So it, it falls within the purview of the application as it stands. Yeah, 
I don't have to vote for it. Right. But I'm saying that I could vote for it if you eliminate the treatment rooms. And to my what knowledge, if what if I called it to my a knowledge, care room? There are yeah. What if I just right. called it a room of care? Yeah. See, I think that might satisfy Mr. What are you going to call it? Room what if I called care. it a room of care? Just, just, just call it an empty room. I'm just saying the treatment room, by calling it a treatment room, could create a different problems on a different piece of property at some point in the future. Right. Yes. I... That type of use is not permitted in that district. The only right. way that the board could justify giving a medical use in that area is an existing building if it didn't, wasn't any more detrimental. But that app type of application hasn't been presented the way I understand it. I know Mr. Stavarsky wants to agree to disagree with me. All right, so so what I understand is the semantics of the word treatment. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, okay. I think I, that I think that's what Mr. Decker's trying to get at. I okay. mean, I I think the majority of us here want to see you succeed in Deerfield, okay? I appreciate but that. I think there's also, you know, today we're here with you, next month we're here with someone else. Absolutely. And it's not necessarily precedent setting, but you always hate to say, well, you let them do it. I completely understand where you're coming from, Mr. Decker. And it's- <clears throat> recently enacted the changes in the zoning last year or this past spring to the last annual town meeting or whatever whenever it was to make commercial from the Waitley town line all the way to Cheapside Bridge because there were so many areas that are zoned residential agricultural that are you know basically should be commercial uses and what have you but uh, they weren't interested in making any other changes other than the changes to accommodate a certain parties, okay? And they did not want to make any, open it up any further. And basically common sense is it should be commercial from the Waitley line all the way to Grangeville. And- uh, So I, I understand your conundrum. I also understand that, you know, given one side of the road is one thing, um, I'm putting in a garden, garden that is a sanctuary and i'm trying to help people from their roots up if you don't know where your feet are you can't find your roots and so the idea behind it is literally connect to connect people back into their roots with so the assistance of agriculture with yes so nature happens to be all about right. roots and so it's, this is basically in a sense a nature sanctuary that has a human component to it mr chair Someone else out here? Did you have a question, Dave? Go ahead. Um, I wanted to suggest for a semantic use, a grounding room. I like it. Can she, sorry. I think John, John was next. Did. And yes, then go ahead. Go yeah, ahead I, I have to say that I, I think uh, Mr. Decker's uh, semantic conundrum is warped because somebody labels something a treatment room does not make it a medical room. I mean, your treatment could be somebody telling you that you should be more sane at a meeting. That does not make it a treatment room. This is clearly an accessory or minimalist use of, uh, uh, of a property that, that has no thrust in medicine. Uh, because if somebody puts a label on something doesn't mean it's a medical use. So I think, you know, you, you, I know you have certain opinions on what the zoning should be in the town, but we shouldn't take it out uh, on this wonderful person who's trying to do a great thing for our town and community because of a particular label. Um, and, and I think it's, it's really a travesty that she's being put through this like this. Uh, this is something that should be approved by this board uh, uh, fairly, fairly uh, quickly. Mr. Chair. Mr. Sadowski. Uh, I'm a little no, bit sorry, Mr. I'm concerned, uh, Mr. Staborski, that you made a comment about a board member. Uh, I think it was a derating statement that you made. Uh, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm sorry, but I, I am uncomfortable when we start uh, looking at comments. Uh, he's entitled to his opinion. Um, and to 
make a comment about what you think he made as being whatever. Uh, I, I think we need to be careful. We don't, uh, we know we're all sensitive to this, uh, but we need to respect the rights of other people. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Hang on a second. Sure. Let me just collect myself and see how many of these grounding rooms we need to order. Um, I just think that uh, we can move forward with the special permit with some conditions if we want to do that. We could take a brief recess. We can put this on for next week. Uh, so uh, I will <clears throat> thank the applicant for their um, explanations and their applicant application and their answer to questions. And then before we close the public hearing, um, we'll see if the board has any other questions for anybody else. And then after we close the public hearing and we can deliberate and make a determination uh, the application. So, uh, I move to uh, close the public hearing. Okay. okay. But before we close, we want to offer the petitioner a chance to revise or pull it and come back with a different proposal or what? Because once you close it, I don't I know understand that. We should right. go I understand that. No one seconded Mr. Sadowski's motion here. Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a, a question before oh. you close because I don't, I as, a, as an alternate, I don't believe I can comment once you close or can I? Uh, so that's why I wanted to speak. It depends on the interpretation. Uh, some chairs and some committees would not allow alternate involvement at all uh, when all the present members are here in the hearing. I have gone with some leeway and I'm um, fine with some leeway that I've granted <laughs> our alternates in the past. So it depends on the situation. Uh, it, well, it depends on, I guess, the interpretation of law. I, it's just a quick comment. It was yes. just um, to satisfy the revision of that language of treatment room. If you want to make a care room, should the applicant do that before we close the hearing was going to be my suggestion or comment and question. Yeah, that's yeah. Really well. It's in the application. So we won't make those two words. Um, yes, so I will ask the applicant if they would like to make any changes to their application before we close the public hearing. Can I change the word treatment to care room, please? Just to separate room. I, I'm not going to tell you, advise you, but you can, if you want to make an application change to change the, the rooms to an, another room to, to help Mr. Decker through this process, feel free. It's going to be, it can be just a, just a room. Don't okay. mention care, don't mention treatment, just a room. Sounds good. Room. Okay. Okay. So we'll dump that change in the minutes, please, Mr. Scribe. Okay. Any other members or members of the public have anything before we close the public hearing? Yes, Mr. Stosky. Recognized as an abutter. Yes. Roger Sadowski. I represent the old year for country store. And we feel this to be a very positive move for the neighborhood. And I appreciate everybody's, Mr. Decker's concerns. Everybody's has done a very thorough job. John has done an excellent job. And I think it's a very positive thing for the community and the area. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. All right. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing unless the applicant wants to make any further changes or withdraw. So I just want to thank all of you and you guys for your support. <coughs> I, um, I wouldn't have come forward if I didn't think that this was just going to be a really great contribution to the community, but not your younger community, your older community, the community that many people don't see. I think that that's something that we all need to consider is that um, 
the richness of the elders that live in our community is part of our history and our legacy. And um, they need this, and I want to give it to them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. If anybody wants to make one. So moved. You, uh, you want to make a motion to close the public hearing? John Staberski moving to close the public hearing. Okay. Does anybody want to second it? I'll second it. Okay. What do I do now? You, 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 just, get to, you just get to sit with us, or you can. <laughs> <we> can. <laughs> it's a public meeting. It's a public meeting. You're welcome so to stay. But can stay. Now, basically, it's just deliberation between the board. So, the members, the poll members, so Jen and Alex here volunteer. Well, we all volunteer. Um, they're alternate members. So now, because we have a full form of poll members, Mr. Saberski, David, Bob, Bernie, and myself, will determine if you meet the criteria. We went through the criteria already. I don't feel as though we need to go through it again. And if we want to issue a special permit, then we can decide that we want some. Um, if we want it, if, we, if the, enough members want to issue it, and then we can do it with conditions. And those conditions that we had talked about and you seemed agreeable to were the condition of the Board of Health on their septic and that you're going to have to meet the requirements of the Conservation Committee and DEP. And as long as the plan is not significantly changed, you don't have to come back to us. So, so I think there's three things that we wanted. One is the Board of Health. What's that? We need to vote. We need to vote to close the vote. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. If that's what you want to do. Right. That's we have a motion that's seconded. So now we'll go I'll just go clockwise here. John? Yay. David? Yes. And Bob? Yes. Bernie? <clears throat> yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So now the public hearing is completely closed off here. Mr. Decker, you got your pen out? Go I got three things. Okay. I got the Board of Health, the Conservation Commission. Yep. And uh, a satisfactory permit to enter the highway, uh, whether or not he needs another curb cut or he doesn't, or she doesn't. And uh, but that'd be up to the building inspector to worry about. But basically, those three things. Okay. Unless you can think of anything else, Mr. Chair. Mr. Potter. Uh, Mr. Decker, can you can you clarify the curb cut? Um, saying if issue. somebody thinks it needs another curb cut, he needs to take care of it. If we think it was that, a so desire, I don't think he needs it it. does, but I'm just saying if somebody, if the building inspector says he has to have it, then he may have to get it. The building inspector didn't say that. All right, right. So just, it's up to I us. If, we're, if, we're gonna, so. if we want to condition it, they have on the plan, there's a current entrance being used. The applicant did say that they believe that they have. A secondary mass DOT approved curb cut that they may reinvigorate. Now, me personally, not speaking for the board, I'm fine with the per traffic flow of, you know, appointment based for the most part, maybe 10 or 15 people attending a seminar here and there uh, with the one entrance that's, that's clearly existing, not covered up as of now. There may be a secondary curb cut there and I think Mr. Decker's point was we could condition it that if building inspector feels as though they need a second curb cut because of their capacity, then we could add that condition if we see fit. Is that what you're looking for? Is that what yeah, your point was, Bob? Yeah, just saying that if they Thanks. think they need it, if the building inspector thinks he needs it, uh, it should be able to require it. It looks like the building inspector might want to chime in. I think the public hearing is closed. Mm -hmm. we, we can ask it. To, okay, go ahead. Is that? I, I think I could determine that based on how it played out in the future with the amount of traffic, whether it would warrant it later. You could condition it that way. Mr. Chair? Mr. Stavarsky, go ahead. I, I would... I would suggest that we not condition it on an additional special per, uh, additional curb cut 
simply that they have a legal egress and uh, egress and egress uh, to the site. Um, what they've described is not is a very 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 light use of the facility, and uh, and I don't see any evidence in anything that we've heard tonight that there should be a second curb cut. Um, so I, I would, I think it's bad precedent to require it unless we have evidence that we need it, that, that it should be, that it's needed. There's been nothing to suggest it should be needed. So as long as they have a valid legal entrance, I think, I think they're fine. Yes, Mr. Decker. But for some reason later, they decide they want to use the other curb cut discontinue one they have to come back for another permit so we're approving it for the plans that have been presented mr chair i i don't care just eliminate it but i'm just saying it could be a problem down the road i i, I don't think it's a problem uh bob i think you know this special permit doesn't it's not one or two curb cuts that's a state highway kind of rule we're looking at whether the whether we meet the six criteria and and, and the detriments outweigh the the the, the benefits um, so i don't see that that is something that is attendant to the special permit mr right. chairman we'll do question oh hang on i get a, something else uh jen can you just hang on for a second uh another condition on this application yes. uh I would entertain it goes with the applicant, not with the property. Yes. That's what you were going to recommend. I was going to say a, a few things. Right. With the, uh, the uh, I would also say that we would give a tentative agreement tonight and then we would meet within a uh, meet next week to see it typed up, the special permit typed up. Yes. I think that is what we need to do. Uh, I, may I say something else? Yes. So I think that there needs to be a condition upon change of ownership. If there's any substantive uh, change to the plan and or the use, they need to come back to the board. Right. Um, that needs to be another condition. Um, those are two very important um, aspects. Uh, also, something we didn't discuss, which would maybe it's for the it would be if it goes to site plan review. Would are you suggesting that they go to site plan review and conservation commission? Well, we they have to go through site plan review. We'll be approving, you know, we we are you know you're approving to approve you. this as presented, um, and if you know. My main concern is conservation. I don't think that planning board would have an additional concern, but that we're approving this as presented. And if there was a significant change that's different than what they gave us, then they need to come back. But yes, that's what I, that's I'm what I was going to say. Tell any applicant if they have to move a, bushes a few feet one way or another, but if they got to move a driveway or the whole plan's different, then they need to come back. But you know. That'd be, you know, whether they need to come back after all the boards approve or disapprove, then I would leave that up to your judgment and my judgment and the building inspector's judgment that the applicant was one cooperative and say, well, we made a few minor changes. It's not a big deal. Then we would decide if it needs to, to come back in front of the board. No, I was just making a few other suggestions for conditions. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Well, I just said them. I said right. the change of ownership substantive change to the use. Yep. You know, and then also after approval from, I mean, that that if there was any big changes from CONCOM or site plan review that they come back to the board if there is, otherwise it stands as an approval. Um, yes. Mr. Chair, yes. the applicant has already stated and it's on her application. She doesn't currently own the property. She's in the process of buying the property. That's correct. So you're gonna specific, specify it be her ownership, not the current owner, correct? That's correct. Great. Yeah, it's not on the, the on other the, thing that we're going to do is we're going to do we'll do a vote tonight a tentative approval and because we've had some issues in the past we're going to meet next week with it we have 14 days out of the public hearings close and we'll have a meeting and then we'll go over it in print after the administrative staff prints it up and make sure everything's good and then we'll then i'll sign it and we'll 
of five of that. So, oh, it's on. I can't figure it out. All right, Alex, you got those. So are, are we going to do a curb cut? Uh, do we want to take a vote on that, or is that we need a? Uh, uh, let's let's go. Oh, I know what I want is as built plans. Once they build it, one the as built plans be reported. As built plans be reported. Okay, so we're not going to do a condition on a curb cut, John. Did you okay. hear that? I think we should, but it's not a big issue. Right. Anybody else want to bring up any conditions? Want to talk about any lighting or anything else? I well, the application has no additional lighting installed, so, okay, so I would assume that the applicant would have brought that up in the public hearing when we have the public hearing. Now the public hearing is closed, so there will be no <laughs> lighting that's not specified on the application. Well, that will also be addressed at the site plan review. Right, and there's no, I didn't see any pictures of light towers. Okay. So I'm going to assume that there's going to be no light towers. If there's light towers, I would consider that as a significant change to the plan. I think so. So, okay, John, you want to move forward or make a motion or, or yeah. anybody uh, here? Uh, so, subject, subject to reviewing uh, the actual special permit decision, uh, I move that we approve this special permit uh, along with the conditions that have been enumerated uh, during um, th this session. Could could we have those read out loud? Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. So one condition is um, they would have to return to us um, based based on the um, change of ownership, change of use, or any substantial or substantive changes uh, to the plans, um, based on other meetings from the conservation commission or the uh, planning board. And also, Mr. Decker's um, request for the plan. As built plans as to be built. reported with the permit. Okay. Didn't um, we also talk about something with the Board of Health? Yeah, right. I think we have a, a suitable subject. Condition of Board of Health review of the septic and yep. conservation. Yep, he did mention Conservation Commission. <coughs> and the, the permit goes to the applicant, not to the property. Can, can we clarify that piece that um, is there a change in zoning that we're granting through this special permit? No, not a change in, of zoning. We're granting a special permit for this use to this applicant at this property. So if somebody buys the business they could they'd have to come back to us they have to come back to whoever the board is at that time but special permits not transferable so we're here we're taking the applicant at face value that she's going to run this business you know we feel as though or i don't know how you feel but i feel as though she's first number word she, this is what she's going to do this is what she's going to say to do so we want to make sure on all of our special permits in my opinion that if that person changes or that company changes, then that use of a special permit is no longer permitted. So they have to come back. So if I drop dead tomorrow? The so, state should come in and uh, make their arguments. Right? Uh, so to this, the applicant is Mary C. Clayton Jones. That is right. And it's not a corporation. It's just, just you personally. Yes, Jen. Yes. That's, so that's what's stated in one of the condition. Upon change of ownership, they need to come to the board in order to either then continue the special permit on the property or not. So, yeah. I, I guess I'm not clear. What, what is, what's the special permit? The 
that's what we're granting. For what? It, what? What? Because oh, it used to be a easy. landscaping place, right? Which right. is agricultural, and this is now still agricultural. Right, but it's not a commercially. It's residential agricultural district. It needs. It requires a special permit for the commercial aspect. For the whole aspect of it, it requires. Unless you just had a house there, residential, agricultural, or you were strictly farming. So it's kind of the retail aspect of it. So uh, when you're combining that thing, all that use together, this requires a special permit. That's why the applicants here. It, it also has ready. been more than two years. It's so right. if the use has no longer been in use for two years, it the landscaping place. Yes. Are you still going to continue the accessory apartment upstairs? The public comment no. closed, didn't it? it, it yes. It, it, I just want to clarify that. It, oh, it's too late. Too late. Too late. Right. And a so, dollar short, John. So, so just to answer your question, so in general speaking, we're issuing a special permit because it's required because this use is not allowable there by right. So the, if the previous, and, and I think Jen's point was, if the previous use is similar in any situation, not just this, where a special permit was, and that use stops, even if it was with the property, or the, that, special, that special permit was issued with the property, and there's a two-year gap, then whoever owns that property wants to go ahead and come back to us. So somebody buying the property and just moving in and living there would not need a special permit because it's residential agriculture. Right, so you're pretty you much anything else. Okay. Absolutely. Right. And probably if it was a garden center, they wouldn't need a special permit again. Well, uh, if you reopened it as a garden there's, center, yeah, maybe. Maybe. You don't know. I could comment on that. I mean, well, just farming. Yes, the motion was seconded. Oh, all questions. Who seconded? Dave seconded the motion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll just hand raise the hand raised. Building inspector, yeah. I was just going to comment that the agricultural use typically would require more than five acres. Okay. If it was a true farm, which this is allowed by special permit because it does, it's not exempt by mass general law. So that's how we end up with the agricultural special permit aspect. If that helps you, David. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll have a vote. Work our way around. John? Yes. David Potter, yes. Bob, yes, with the restriction as mentioned and the change in the wording on the applicants. Okay. Bernie? No. Okay. I'll vote yes. Okay. So, Tentatively, based on our conditions, as we explained, we're going to issue a special permit after we see it in writing with the conditions. So we're going to try to meet uh, when members can meet uh, next week. If anybody have their calendars available, I assume just full members. Uh, well, you're welcome to attend, but yes. <laughs> I'm just making sure I don't try to I'm trying. I'm trying to, you know. What I can here, just keep uh, grounded. Unfortunately, Mr. Sokolowski, Chair, I'm I'm unavailable Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday nights. Monday and Tuesday, I could do. Monday, but yeah. Monday, Monday or Tuesday, yeah. my good. Monday's my only good night. I think we should do it the following week. Okay. <clears throat> the following Thursday. week. I just don't want to get too close to that 14 days. Yeah, we've got something to the doors at the last minute for us. So April 4th, Monday. That's, that's good with me. Fourth or fifth are fine. Yeah, that works for me. At 6.30 or 7? Seven? 7, please. 7, please. Bernie? No, I don't think you need me to. Well, Bernie, I'm just trying to include people, okay? Yeah. I don't want to leave you out. Well, thank you. I'm not sure. Okay, so back. Monday, the April 4th at 7 p.m. Yeah. David, what kind of meeting? Uh, town hall, does that work for you? In person? 
Uh, in person, yes, if the Zoom accounts are tied up, but in person, yes, it's fine. Not hybrid. It's not going to be hybrid. Okay. But does, does that make a difference for you, John? Um, I prefer hybrid, to be honest with you. You won't be able to sign it. Yeah, well, you don't have to sign it at the meeting. You can sign it, come in. April 4th at seven, I have one account at, wait a minute. No, I don't. Uh, planning board's meeting that night at seven and they're doing hybrid. So it would have to be fully remote. You mean fully in person? No, fully remote because planning board is hybrid. They're meeting in person as well as online. Yeah, so there's what about the kit? We can use the kitchen. Yes, you can use the kitchen, you can use the conference room. You can use the parking lot. But but it's hybrid. So therefore you have to have means for the public to be like for you to see the public. And well, if we don't do it hybrid, if we just do it remote, remote which is what about Tuesday night? How's the how does the Zoom accounts look Tuesday night? Let me look. Hold on. You know, this is the bane of my existence, right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, from my phone, the fifth looks good. So I would choose the fifth over the fourth. Do you want me to go look in your office? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, how about Please? you? Tuesday the fifth? Yeah, Tuesday the fifth. There's the annual fire district meeting that night. Oh, is it? There is. Oh, I got it. Right Unless you did it at six o'clock. I could do it at six. Well, that usually goes quick over there, but you never know. Yeah. We're good on the fifth. Okay, fifth hybrid at seven o'clock. How about 7.30? You know, if you guys wanted, if because of the other meeting, if you guys needed to, wanted to go at six, I, I can I can change my, my you stuff. You do it at six? Yeah, I could do it at six. Six. Is that good with you, town hall, Jen? Yes. Six o'clock hybrid in the town room with a rope. Yes. <laughs> we'll do it hybrid on the fifth. Hi hybrid on Tuesday the fifth. Okay. Yep. At right. six. Now, well, people have got to be here to sign the. I, I will come here and sign it. Okay. Tuesday the rest the of you fifth. can sign it administratively. The most important part, because we ran into this before, is I want to make sure all the members have voted for it. The Agreed. conditions are written how they want them to Yep. And if there's an issue, then we can we can make an amendment and or we can change it. We'll could, can, can I ask that that opinion or the the decision be emailed to us beforehand so we don't have to sit and read it at the um, at, yeah. at the meeting? I'll yeah. have Sue. I'll have Sue email it prior to the meeting. Okay. Twenty four hours prior to the meeting. How many? 24 hours prior to the meeting. Sure, but no deliberation. I understand. You don't have to send it to us, send it, send it to us whatever way makes the attorney general's office happy. Okay. So you want it on the fourth. Okay. I, well, yeah, I'd yeah. like 24 hours. That, I'd like to give the membership. Yeah. So when we get here. Yep, you got it. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. you gonna bring up tonight? Yes, I are. Well, I already we already went over a little bit, but for those of you that aren't here, weren't here earlier, we approved the minutes, so you didn't have to. We got no one else. That's good. Full of that. I don't like to go for them anyway. I understand. And then we have uh, the the four of us that were here agreed to do quarterly meetings, if even if there's no. Uh, Agenda items, there's no applications. Makes sense. Okay, so I don't think we need to take a formal vote on that. I think we get everybody's input on that. For John, you have anything on that? Nope, it's fine. All right, so there's an accessory by, uh, apartment bylaw committee that the planning board has invited us to have. A, well, I don't believe it's a full planning board. There's a committee, they're not going to meet till after town meeting. They got, they hired a consultant. They got a draft that was sent out about accessory apartments, uh, about changing the town bylaw and accessory apartments. So um, 
Does any member want to be on that committee? And then I'll let the committee chair know who is on that committee. And that idea is they're going to, not for this year, but for next year, have accessory apartment bylaw changes. And I'll do it. Somebody else wants it. Okay. Bob Decker wants to do it. John, do you have anything on accessory apartments? No, I'm fine. David? All right, Bob, you're it. Bernie, you only want me sitting on it. Okay. Anything else anybody's got working on the agenda not reasonably anticipated? It's your annual Christmas party we didn't have. Christmas party. We didn't have it. Is the only one at a Christmas party? We should. <laughs> the only the, the Christmas party that I missed, well, they didn't have it. Hopefully next year. Okie dokie. Let's. Yeah, motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. That's out of order. I was joking. Mr. So moved. Chair. No, that's not a joke. I wasn't speaking to you, Mr. Decker. Motion to adjourn. It's adjourned. Seconded. All in favor? I voted twice. Aye. 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 Aye.